Hey guys, Sam Mellard here. This video is going to be the start of a series covering Kestrel's new pocket weather meter. This is the 5700 Elite. This is the Link model with Bluetooth. This is going to be a supplement to the written review I did on it for Pan Auto Precision. This first one is going to cover a basic overview of the meter and some of the you know, initial startup type things that you need to do to it to get it working for you. Uh, as we progress down the line, we'll work into how to use the the weather feature on this, how to use the ballistic feature, and then eventually we're going to work our way out into the woods and we're going to integrate it with an iPhone iPhone 6 and use the uh, Kestrel's Link ballistic app to run the weather meter off of the phone. So uh, anyway, I'm going to try to keep them as short as possible but give you as much information as possible at the same time. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, this will cover the basic uh, use and setup as well as a, a short overview of the new Kestrel uh, Elite weather meter, also known as the K5700 or the Kestrel 5700 Elite. This model is the one with link Bluetooth capability. It replaces the Kestrel 4500 AB. It has the applied ballistics ballistic solver built into it. Now let's just start right on the back. One of the big differences between this and the 4500 is the fact that the battery door is now on the back of the unit and it's isolated from the internal circuitry of the meter. Uh, apparently there were some problems with batteries leaking. I think if you use the recommended lithium battery you'll probably never have a problem with that. But this cures any of the problems associated with alkaline batteries that freeze and take out all of your uh, electronics inside a meter. So to open this door, there's a latch here on the back just slide it and lift the door up and you can see it's completely o-ring sealed You're not gonna have to worry about water or dust getting in there it comes with an energizer ultimate lithium battery in it one double a pretty simple it's got a little sign on it shows you which way it goes now when you get this you're gonna have to do some calibration on the compass and you're gonna have to set your time and date uh, since I took the battery out of it I'm gonna have to do a compass calibration but that's okay because I wanted to show you how it's done put it back you just snap it on. Now one of the other things I'll show you while I'm back here is the lanyard that comes with it. Now on the 4500 it was a, a snap link type deal where you could take the lanyard off and just leave a short tag here and I kept that on but on this one it comes with a regular lanyard with no capability of snapping it on and off. So what I do on a lot of my gear is I put this little chunk of MSR cordage. This is a red color with a reflective striping built into it. And I just leave enough on it so that I can hold on to this and swing it around my head to clean out the air on the air sensor. It has the added feature of being able to find this in the dark with a flashlight if you have to. Okay, the keypad on this is mostly the same as the 4500 was with a couple of differences. Number one, this is the power button and that's all it does. On the 4500 this was also your screen selector. Uh, on the 5700 this is your screen selector, the gear button in the top left. Also, on the 4500, this was your capture button. Now on the 5700, this is the capture button right here at the top with the red sl slash through it. Okay, so when you get this, you're going to have to go in and set up your time and date. So we'll come down here to System, and you'll press the center button, which is the Enter button, and here is your time and date. It's highlighted now. Now to set this, you're going to hit Enter again, and it'll give you some options. Now the up and down arrows control going up and down inside whatever screen you're in. Okay, so we'll come up and we'll just mess with this a little bit. We'll, we'll go to a 24 hour format. So I want to press the side button and that will change to 24 hour. And then you can just work right down the list, change your minutes. You can adjust your second, you can do a date format, the year, the month, the day, and so forth. Okay, let's back out of here. Let's go ahead and set up our measurements. So the measurements, you can turn off what you don't want to use on this. So if you don't want uh, time and date, you can turn it off just simply by pushing the side arrow. Uh, you've got direction, wind speed, crosswind, headwind, temperature, wind chill. And I don't use wind chill. I use humidity, but I don't use heat index, so I turn them off, dew point, and so forth. So basically anything that this meter will show you, you can turn on and off. Okay, once we have our time and date set, uh, when you get this meter, you're going to have to calibrate the compass. If you change the battery in the meter, you're going to have to calibrate the compass. And if you do a firmware update, you'll have to calibrate that compass. Now, you want the, the calibration done because it gives you, number one, 
uh, compass capability in the meter itself if you want to use it as a straight compass, but it also lets you do all the really cool wind capture uh, features when you start to you know, work with direction of fire and things like that in the AB program. So you definitely want to calibrate that compass. Now they, they say, you know, they make it sound really easy to do that, and I'll admit I've had some that uh, have been real easy to calibrate, but sometimes it'll drive you crazy. And all you can do is just take a deep breath and try again. So let's go ahead and go into the screen. It tells you to hold the Kestrel upright, rotate three times slowly at about 10 seconds per turn. So the, the best luck I've had is in the palm of my hand. Uh, one thing you don't want are any kind of big metal objects, especially things that emit any kind of uh, uh, radio signals or anything weird like that really close to this. So the camera might even mess with it, but I'm gonna go ahead and try right in front of the camera. So you hit the start, I'm going to put this in the palm of my hand, and I'm going to rotate the unit. Now the biggest uh, reason for failure to have this happen is it tells you that you're turning it too slowly. Well, I think you can see that I'm going faster than 10 seconds per turn. Okay, and it wouldn't let me do it right here in the palm of my hand with the camera and all the lights and stuff. So. Uh, this is one of those operations on this meter that you just have to have a lot of patience for sometimes. And if you go on Kestrel site or I can't remember if it was on a YouTube channel or wherever I saw it, there was a guy, you know, all calm about it. Yeah, all you do is you put it down and you spin it slowly three times. Well, that's how it's supposed to work. And sometimes it does work that way, but other times it's very frustrating. So just take a deep breath and try again. This is what you'll see when you're done and the calibration is complete. Okay, we're done calibrating the compass, so we're going to go ahead and back out into the, the main screen here. We've already gone through our measurements. Now let's look at units. And what this is going to do is it's going to let you set this for how you want to read uh, all your different measurements. So wind speed I've got set for miles per hour, temperatures in Fahrenheit, uh, pressure, station pressure, barometric pressure is in inches of mercury, altitude is reading in feet. We have language, you can do English, French, German, Spanish. Uh, the battery, this is where you want to set what kind of battery it has in it. Now I highly recommend you just do what they tell you to and run a ultimate lithium battery in it. But if you insist on going with a different battery, you're going to have to come in here and change this setting so that it knows what kind of life it has. So right now it's set on lithium, you can send it, set it for NICAD or you can set it for alkaline. So if in a pinch you need to replace a battery with a set of uh, Duracell AA's uh, or one Duracell AA, you can pull it off, just set this to alkaline and you're off to the races. Here, let me go ahead and change that to lithium. And if you want to factory restore this whole unit, you can just hit this and it'll just do it for you. All right, so let's take one more look at something that's pretty cool about this meter as compared to the 4500 and to do that I'm going to go ahead and turn these lights off. Okay what we're going to do now is we're going to scroll down. I'm just going to go ahead and turn that on. This is the red screen. Let's go ahead and scroll on down to display. We're going to highlight display and hit enter. Okay so in the display screen you now have the option instead of in the 4500 you had to order it with night vision or this uh, light red background or you order it with a white backlight. Now on the 5700 you can just turn on whichever one you want. So right now it's set on red. There's the white and as soon as the camera adjusts for it you can see how well that works in the dark. So there's a few things you can do on the screen. You can adjust the contrast. It comes set at 10 and that's where I found it works the best. Uh, if you increase it, it starts to kind of wash out. And if you decrease it the same thing happens. So 10 is a really good number on the contrast screen. Auto shutdown, you can set this to automatically shut off if you aren't using it in 15 minute intervals up to 60 minutes. You can also turn it off. So you can have the auto shutdown turned off. So this thing will stay on as long as the, the button is turned on. I leave mine set at 30. Uh, on some of the testing I did, I let it, I let it uh, stay at 60 minutes but uh, 30 seems to be a pretty good compromise kind of in the middle. All right, let's go back down. Okay, that was the white screen. That's the red screen. It's pretty cool. 
Okay, I'll go ahead and show you this the top button here. This is the mode screen, and this is where you toggle between using the Kestrel as a weather meter, where you can just open up that vane and the impeller mount there and just read wind, read temperature, read whatever you want. Uh, here I have it in the user screen where I have the temperature, the uh, humidity, and the the dew point temperature. I have no idea why that's in the user screen, but uh, it's not one I would build, but you can build them to hold three different values like that. Uh, we won't go over that today. We'll cover that in the next video. But in this screen, in the mode, you can toggle between weather and ballistics. Ballistic gets, ballistics gets you into the applied ballistic solver part of this meter. You just enter, and here you have your target information, wind. Uh, this is your gun management area, a uh, place where you can turn on all the different environmental things. You can also build range cards. Uh, it'll give you different options in your ballistic screen. You can manage a whole gun profile, the whole library right out of the screen. And uh, we'll go over that in another video as well. So there you have it. Uh, that's just the basic setup, how to get started, how to turn it on, how to do the batteries, things like that. Uh, I'll see you next time. We'll talk about some more of the advanced features using this as a weather meter and as an applied ballistic solver.